Uh, I'm Matt. I'm Robin, and uh, we work with another guy, Rob, and the three of us are flat E. We're based in London, and we make animations, we make film, and we've been doing it for about eight years. Yeah, eight years. The way that we usually describe our company depends on who we're speaking to. Um, it predominantly involves some kind of animation or moving image. And um, the way I describe myself is that I'm a director. Um, however, I work as an animator. I work occasionally photographing work. It, it, it really depends on, on the work we decide to, to do. I think the the thing with um, that film, uh, the Bunny and the Bull, is is that it is the first time really that it felt like we were utilising skills, a skill set that we'd learnt in one industry, which is the music industry, um, and we were using those skills, but in the film industry, so um, that they, they were these. In in our minds before we did that job, those two industries were separate things, and the way we worked in those industries was a separate thing. But on that film, it felt like there was a complete crossover because we were, we were directly using skills um, from uh, live projection, but um, in a film studio um, where they were shooting a feature film. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, and, and that, that was the first time that I really thought, hang on a minute, this is, you know, this is, um, this is great for us because it, it, it means that we're really using all of our skills on on one job because normally, you know, we have to sort of pick and choose certain things depending on on what it is that we're doing because we do wa work on a on a broad range um, of projects. I think we'd all describe ourselves as directors, um, but um, we're sort of hand, hands-on directors. Not not in a traditional sense of like a movie film director, you know. Um, it, it's more like w we have a, a a clear view of what we want work to end up like, um, but also um, through the way we've learnt the industry and the the way we've learnt to work, uh, it means that we can also be incredibly hands on, which um, it you know it it makes for interesting work. It, you know, it, it means that you can have an idea and then at, at least have enough knowledge to know exactly how to pro produce that idea, um, how to make it, how to make it become real. Um, even if you don't do any of the work on it, you, you still, you still can know how to, how to make it happen. You can describe to somebody exactly how you want it to be made or you can probably set about just making it yourself. Um, it usually usually boils down to how much money is available. You know, if if you have a lot of money to make something, then usually you can get people to help you achieve that. And if you have an idea and there is no money to make it, then it usually means that you've got to go about making it yourself um, or getting your close friends to help you make it. Um, but I, I really like the idea that... Um, that direct directors now um, can can be um, completely hands on with their work. They don't have to sit in a in a in a chair, you know, kind of telling everybody what to do. They can get out of the chair and go and just go and make things. Um, you know, I d I do think that on on large scale productions, it's very important maybe not to be so hands on. I think I've learned that um, because you end up running around. And driving yourself crazy trying to do everything, um, when in actual fact, um, you know, you'd be much better off um, just getting getting people to help you achieve what you want to achieve, and and that way you can stay removed slightly um, uh, from the process, and that allows you to get an overall view of of what's actually what's actually happening. Yeah, I think that's that's a really good point. It's 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 being aware of what's possible in the different areas of of a production you know and uh, uh, that always benefits you know if if you know that 
a certain look is achievable with a rear projection screen as opposed to a green screen, you know, then um, obviously it's it's useful to to have that that understanding. And um, and I think there's much more dialogue and cross pollination um, as as all media blurs. I think the saturation of um, of of uh, material that you get to see on a day to day basis now can be a bit daunting. You know, you can get a bit caught up with looking at what other people are doing, um, and uh, but I do think it's a good thing. You know, I think it's a positive thing, and I I don't. You know, I think if you're getting maybe if you're getting a bit stuck with your work then it maybe that's time to turn off the content a little bit stop looking at what everybody else is doing and maybe go for a walk and and think about what you know what you want to do um but generally i think it's you know i think it's a really good thing the amount of uh, of work that's that's out there that you're now able to see i mean i remember when i was growing up if you you know you, you'd have to buy magazines and you know you'd have to go to film screenings and to see things you'd actually have to go out and and do things whereas now you can sit at home you can wake up at first thing in the morning and when your alarm goes and open your laptop and and watch um something that someone in San Francisco's just made mm. um and then offset against um that against something that somebody in Sweden's just made and and marvel at how they're sort of um uh, quite similar <laughs> Um, I think it's fascinating too to consider the the impact. Uh, my friend's two year old child can operate an iPhone. Um, uh, actually, my friend's two year old child can operate the photo gallery on an iPhone. You know, the um, I don't know what kind of implications that has on us as a society, but I'm pretty sure when I was two. Um, I, I'd not seen a. <laughs> I, I don't know. You, you just think about how uh, how a human brain develops, you know, and and um, growing up with all this material around us, um, uh, it, it's it's exciting to think about the kind of the way that we'll communicate in the future, the way that um, that technology. It's clear it's it's going to be such a. Um, an integral part of our future as well. I think what's what's um, really exciting as a company that's producing visual content um, is when, when you think about that, you just, all I think about is the amount of opportunities that there are going to be and continue being in the future for, for pursuing that, for pursuing making visual content. You know, it's, it's not going away. It's not, you know, um, technology isn't going backwards. You know, th we're only going to be looking at looking at things more and more and more, um, and it just presents new challenges and 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 makes you know makes you think of more interesting ways to show things. I, th um, I think I that's a really important point. I think that um, despite <clears throat> despite there being so many screens around and and people being so people's visual vocabulary being um, so so cluttered with Im images you know the the point that I want to make is that it's quite a challenge now to produce something with feeling um that that carries a kind of carries emotion without it just being a kind of throwaway item there there's this whole idea of people's attention spans uh getting shorter because of uh youtube clips and and things like that and and I don't necessarily agree. I think that people just graze on these th th this this form of content, and it's just an an additional f uh, um, entertainment area. Um, I think that I think the future of film, for instance, is pretty safe because humans engage with a one and a half hour, two hour film. Um, it 
in a different way to the way that they engage to a YouTube clip on their phone, for instance. You know, it's or a, or a live performance that in, involves um, involves visuals, um, yeah, projected, you know, projected visuals. Um, um, it's funny what you were saying about um, people saying now that um, uh, people's attention spans um, are getting too short, and it made me laugh. And I and I just thought, well, maybe. Um, Maybe people's attention spans were too long in the past, and maybe you know maybe we need shorter attention spans. Maybe that's part of the evolution. <laughs>